Thanks, Scott, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Yeah, we're really excited to do this film series for people of color in mm -hmm. movies for Inclusion. Mm -hmm. I met Scott basically during the premiere of Exit Plan, um, directed and produced by Manny Chan. And Scott Newville yes. <laughs> <laughs> was the lead actor squeeze in the film. When you got involved, did you, you did martial arts like in the film and mm -hmm. some fighting. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that beforehand or did you learn for the movie? Well, actually, I would say that I learned for the movie. But um, myself, in terms of uh, fighting experience, I, I have experienced uh, competing as a boxer. I okay. did that in the past. Besides, okay. I grew up um, a fan of martial arts movies anyway, so growing up as a kid, um, mimicking, you know, uh, martial arts was something that we, we you know, I did you know, my whole childhood. Yeah, you mentioned you watched a lot of films mm -hmm. growing up and you were a fanatic. Yeah. Um, are there any specific films that stuck out to you that you... There were so um, many. Really loved, yeah? Yeah, there were so many. I think my earliest love affair was, in terms of film or film franchise, was Star Wars. At the top right. of my head, um, early on, as far back, four, five, six, the old ones, yeah, the old ones, the original, oh, true. yeah, the original mm -hmm. trilogy, yeah. You know, um, when I think about it, and um, I grew up watching the Hong Kong movies as okay. a kid, growing up, a lot of those. They, they used to, you know, for a lot of us, they used to come on Saturday mornings every, back in the in those days in the eighties. Okay. So that was something that we we all used to watch. Okay, nice. The Hong Kong films obviously start some diversity. Um, mm -hmm. Star Wars, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Diversity. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the only diversity is really like the aliens. Right, right, right. Much. And later on, Billy Dee Williams came on board as Lando Calrissian. Yes. And, uh, Empire. So that, yes. that definitely had an impact. You know, yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah, what did you think of his character in the movie? Or? Oh, the original? Yeah. Uh, oh, I thought he was great. I mean, he was uh, very suave. He was cool. He was, and Billy Dee Williams already had a reputation in Hollywood mm -hmm. as being uh, the handsome ladies' man. Mm -hmm. Um, so then suddenly, you know, he's an empire strikes back and, you know, li little things like that. And it's not, it wasn't a big thing, but for that time for, uh, uh being a, a black kid, an African kid, an African American kid, that, that, that's made a big impact. Yeah. There wasn't, there weren't a lot of, uh, role models, black role models in film in those days. Right, right. You know what I mean? This is, you know, early, early eighties. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the eighties was not, in my opinion, from what I remember, not very friendly toward the image of uh, a black leading men at, at that time. So to see Billy Dee Williams there as Mando Calrissian and you know, doing the thing, especially in Return of the Jedi, I mean, he actually destroyed the Death Star. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. it, it definitely has that impact on you. It gives you that sense of like, wow. Like I can be part of that. Yeah, like, exactly. Part of that series that I love so much. Yeah, yeah we're there too. That, that's kind of what it shows you. We're in that universe too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the universe of Star Wars, which is fictional, but yeah. like so impactful. For yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. And um, in the new movie, Solo, yes. uh, it just came out. I just saw it yesterday. Oh, you did? It, yeah. Okay. No spoilers, yeah. but overall, okay. how did you how did you like it? I liked it personally. Yeah. Um, it's so funny you mentioned, it's a funny coincidence that we even mentioned Star Wars, because, and then mentioning Billy Dee Williams' character, Lando Calrissian, because that role was reprised by this actor. Okay, that's his thing, Donald Glover. Yes. So it's so funny, and then he just made a music video called This Is America, which also had a big yes. impact on race relations yeah. you know, not too long ago. And then there he is reprising Billy Dee's role as Lando Calrissian, and he did a great job. Yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. Was, I'm excited to see that. Oh, yeah, he sounded like him. He captured a lot of his mannerisms, but he brought his own uh, persona to it as well. Right. And I like that he, how he's like involved in film and music, yeah. but also bringing kind of... Um, the cultural part of it too, like his own personality to right, it. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and not just, I don't know, doing exactly what the director wants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. Like making a statement. To yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right, and I think you nailed it. Person, me personally, that's what I think. The character? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm really excited to see that. What are your thoughts in general, <laughs> like being an actor and doing this as a career? Mm -hmm. like? How do you think the industry, how do you think they view diversity? Or like, what has been your experience? You know, it's, I feel like they're scared of it. They're very, they're very uh, antsy about it. They, you know, they have, a, it seems like they have some kind of an apprehension toward it. And um, I think oftentimes when people, they've been confronted uh, about it, they make excuses saying that, oh, you know, using economics and finance or lack thereof as an excuse to not invest in diversity or, uh, you know, Diversify their um, their casts or whatever. Even in instances where the storylines yeah. require it, 
or where they were supposed to. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and there have been instances like that. Oh yeah, like yeah. gods of Egypt. And oh God, oh that's yeah. awful. Oh, that's awful. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is so awful. It's a travesty. Yeah, God. And what was the other one? Gods of Egypt. With, you know, the same scenario was repeated with uh, that Ridley Scott movie, the Kings, Exodus, Gods and Kings. Okay. You know, um, I, I you know I thought it was a travesty. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's so much great talent out there. Mm -hmm. Like, but I do get the sense that you know the industry and Hollywood kind of only defaults to, you know, starring someone who's Caucasian or white. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and yeah, I do sense that there's an apprehension or like um, aversion to like starring anyone who looks different. Yeah. I think, personally, um, this is my theory, let me know what you think, mm -hmm. but they think people will only watch movies that star white people, mm -hmm. which is why they only star those. Um, and even though the data, like, throughout all these TV shows with diversity, like Lost, Heroes, all these movies, mm -hmm. have shown that diversity makes more money. That's correct. Yeah. Like, Hollywood still is saying, like, oh, no, I don't think it's going to make money. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, why do you think Hollywood keeps forgetting about that or not realizing? I'm glad you asked me that because uh, I, I honestly, I, I would love to just go on record and say I personally believe that the people in Hollywood, whether it's racism or they're just out of touch. I think they're just out of touch with reality, creatively, so to speak. Um, uh, I, I think that they they uh, they live in a bubble. I think that these individuals they live in a bubble. They're not living in reality, uh, or it, rather, uh, what certain people would say where I'm from, to, uh, for lack of a better word, they would refer to the people like that as being what we call corny. Corny. Yeah. Okay. Because they're just out of touch with okay. reality. They're out of touch with the wants and needs of the masses. Right. This misconception, you know, yeah. which is a reflection of their own, um, uh, what you call biases, prejudices. And comfort so, zone. Comfort kind of. zone, right. Yeah. Right. Even though, you know, statistics that you mentioned show otherwise, contrary mm -hmm. to what they say. Mm -hmm. But it's like they're not getting the message. You know, and, you know, the thing that I think I think is that there were times in the past in the industry where they did take a chance mm -hmm. and it was successful when they had a diverse cast or they had leading men who were of color. But the problem is that, you know, genres were created out of uh, those moments of success and those genres would die. Mm -hmm. So once those genres died, um, the, you know, Hollywood mainstream, as you mentioned, the word default, they go back to their default. Okay. To sort of going back to whitewashing. Which so. genres are you talking about specifically? Good, good question. Um, I would say maybe martial arts with Bruce Lee's breakthrough with Into the Dragon. Right. You that. Black exploitation mm -hmm. movies, also in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah, kung fu movies. Yeah. Yeah, kung fu movies. Mm -hmm. What they call um, urban dramas or on the street they would call hood movies in the nineteen nineties. Okay. Um, they started out with these groundbreaking uh, uh, classics that created this genre mm -hmm. that was lucrative, but then eventually that genre would die, and they would be like, okay, no one wants to see this anymore. Okay, so yeah, the trend ended, yeah. and then they kind of forgot about the yeah. importance of diversity and how people right. like it. That's right. Yeah, and then they begin to see it as a loss or as a, as a money pit to keep you know putting money into genres that died. Yeah. So they what they do is I feel, I mean that's just a theory of mine. So, mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's way more deep and complicated than as I described. But that they're mm -hmm. yeah almost like more pessimistic about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I do feel like that industry kind of has too little faith. In humanity, yes, in our exactly. country, mm -hmm. because I really do believe like people have their own opinions. Um, but like, if you show another person's opinion in a very positive or like non threatening way, then people will be receptive to it. That's correct, cool. yeah. yeah. And with movies, you have such a big chance to do that, like yeah. with fiction and fantasy and like, yeah. you know, sci fi romantic comedies. Yeah. Like, it's a perfect way to make. Um, diversity seem or diversity show that is um for everyone. Yes, much. exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I, I agree. I think that yeah. is a big chance, and I, I've said this many times on record where I believe that they are squandering an opportunity right. to, uh, like you said, they're missing a big chance to discover some amazing talent. Right. Because the talent is out there, yeah. but they're not creating an incentive or an opportunity for that talent to present itself. Or you know what I mean? And, and, and you're right; they're missing out. And, right. You know, and and they don't see that yeah. until somebody manages to fall through the cracks and create a breakthrough. Usually through independent movies, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, you know, or some. Nowadays we have this uh, platform, social media, or rather the internet, where people can make their own 
right. um, you know, you know, create their own little production, no matter We're how. Just hoping, yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit with diversity, exactly, yeah, exactly. And then they jump on the bandwagon when they see that oh, people want to actually see it because again, they're out of touch. They live in a bubble. They don't know what people really want. Right. They go by their own standards. Yes, and yeah. if they are biased, then they'll bring that bias to what exactly. everyone else wants. Exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> and they see it as like a burden, mm. or like something that they, like I don't know why they see diversity as. A burden that like people want now, so they they have to do it. Yeah. Instead of wanting to do it to begin with. Yes. Because yeah, people are people, and like exactly. like not everyone only wants to watch white people. Exactly right. <laughs> but they have that conception that people only want to watch white people. Yeah. 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 Exactly right, and it's just, it's sad, and it's it's a travesty, a tragedy, mm. uh, not just um socially, uh, but also creatively. I think you mentioned before when you said they're missing out. Yeah, they're missing out. It shouldn't be about race or gender or anything like that. Talent, you know, talent, true talent transcends. True. Because even right. racists, when they see someone who's talented, they're talented, like an athlete, musicians, they will watch. Yeah. Because even though they may have some biases and prejudices and racist ideologies, mm -hmm. the, the impact of talent usually transcends that. Right, right. You know? Yeah, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes I think people can see past their biases, mm -hmm. but other times... I think people can't see past their biases and like they apply these filters yes where if exactly. there is like true talent mm -hmm. they'll still be like oh like that's great for that type of person or like figure out a way to dismiss it that's right which is so infuriating yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly. and it's wrong and I agree with you they, they create these filters mm -hmm. you know what I mean and uh, and they don't want to let go even though it's like deep down inside it, there's something telling what well, should be telling them that wow this person or a musician or actor or this movie is amazing. Yes. But again, they create these filters. I, I think, you know, usually people who are hardcore uh, prejudiced, mm -hmm. racist, whatever you call it, or uh, sexist or what have you, they, they, they just want to cling yeah. to those filters. Yeah. Instead of letting, just letting go and allowing the talent to flourish. It's like so part of their, I don't know, if it's part of their identity or their ideology where it's like, to see past that is just, um, <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's an uphill battle? Like, do you think people like that would ever learn to open their minds up? I'm an optimist. Object we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We've seen those rare anomalous moments where they happen. Those breakthroughs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even recently with Black Panther, with uh, Bruce Lee, his impact on the industry when he finally got a break. Right. You know that he always deserved. Um, and you know to open up the eyes of prejudiced people. Right. right. So I mean, it, I think it gives a hint to what is possible. Yes, and I think sometimes. It does remain like a tiny glimpse or hint where people realize like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty great yes. to see like a black person star or an Asian person or a Latino star. But then it's like people come back to the comfort zone so yes. easily, I think. Yes. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah. Which is simple. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Because like people, you know, like they think ideally and then it's like, okay, back to real life now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, good, good way to put it. But I think, like, even though people can mean well, like, if it's possible to tie it with some other incentive, that mm -hmm. may, like, push people in the right direction more. Like, so with Incluvi, mm -hmm. like, our goal is to kind of financially motivate um, the industry, the entertainment industry, to have more diversity. Uh -huh. So that um, very diverse films, like Black Panther or uh -huh. Wrinkle in Time, can do well in the box office. Uh -huh. So Hollywood will think like, hey, like these movies with inclusion are actually doing great. Like, let's do more of them. Yes. And then with Includy, if a very almost yeah, like racist or like whitewashed film is produced, then people can find those and say, Hey, like I don't support that, like I'm not gonna watch it. Right. Then right. those movies will tank in the box right. office and they'll be like, Oh, I guess, you know, people are not gonna buy this stuff anymore. Right, right. <laughs> So that's kind of like our goal, like oh. with Incluvi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That gives me hope. Yeah. <laughs> that you supported my, my optimism. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm optimistic, but like kind of um, guarded optimist. Yeah. Like I do yeah. realize that there are other incentives um, other than just like meaning well. Like meaning well is a great start, but mm. it's not always sustainable. The finances are there sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, Scott, 
thank you so much for coming over and um, filming here. Thank you. <laughs> at our place. And thank you, Colin, for filming. Um, yeah. I yeah. love talking to you about diversity. I do, too. I hope we can do it again. I hope so, too. Yeah, maybe yeah. over coffee or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Then we'll get the buzz. Then we can really get it going. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.